Hello, welcome back to the discussion on bias variance theorem. In order to make sure, uh, in order to make sure the concepts of bias variance are clear, so we'll, we'll, we'll look at few more graphs. So, in the first graph, what you see is in the first graph, what you see this basically is a model with high variance. In that, what you basically see is that you see that the model has actually fit to each and every data point, right? Uh, so. Yeah, even though even though even though your bias is low in the first case, the problem is it has very high variance. What has happened over there is the model is actually fit to each and every point of the training data set. Right? So this is not what we want, right? So what we basically want is we want a model which generalizes well. Right? And the model should be able to perform in a similar manner even on data which it has not seen before, right? So when I say the model has not seen the data, is basically it does not use that particular data for uh, for for training. Right? That's in the first case. In the first case, that's not possible because the model has very high variance, right? Uh, coming to the second case where you have uh, high bias, right? Even though the model is not fit to the training data set, right? The model is not followed all the points clearly, right? But even then, what is happening is accuracy is very bad. And this is not what we want, right? Even though, yeah, now it's like, it's like think of it as levers, right? Now, if you try to reduce the bias lever, what happens is the, the variance lever increases. Right? Now, in other way, if you try to reduce the bias lever, right? if you try to increase the bias lever, what happens is the variance lever goes down. What we want, what we want is basically this one. This is like a case where uh, bias is low, comparatively low. Obviously, it's not, so this is where, this is the case where it has the lowest bias. Okay? But uh, in this case, bias is low, even the variance is low. So this is where you have that sort of that balance. Okay, uh, just just to you know to make sure this uh, in order to make sure this is e this concept is even more clear. Consider this graph, right? On your on your x-axis, you have something which is called as model complexity or algo complexity. Right, right, and nothing but the complexity of your model. Right, on your y-axis, you have your error error calculations. Right. Uh, coming back to this x-axis, what do you mean by model complexity or algo complexity is nothing but say linear regression, right? An algorithm more complex than linear regression could be a decision tree, right? Then you have decision tree, then you have random forest, then you have boosting, right? then you have uh, maybe your boosting algorithms like exe-boost and so on, right? Then you could have even deep learning algorithms, right? So that is where, that, that is what is meant by model complexity or algo complexity, okay? So this curve, the, the 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 curve which you see is this is this is the curve for bias. Right? So as you can see, as your model complexity increases, your bias reduces, right? Now similarly, as you see, this is the curve for variance, right? Now as you can see, as your model complexity increases, your variance increases, right? Now basically, what we want is basically this curve. So what you can basically what what you can say is so this is what we want right so this basically is that point where the bias and the variance sort of intersect so you can think of this as some some sort of sweet spot right uh, basically what what do you mean by that is this is where sort of you have that sort of balance between your bias and variance ideally this should this should, this point should be where you should basically choose right? because in any in any in any data science use case in any machine learning use case right, we are not sure on what what sort of complexity what sort of model complexity should we have and what sort of range of error should we have so this curve this curve will help you with that okay this curve will help you with that saying uh, how much of what's what's the trade off between that you do so suppose consider a case where you are fine with the increase in bias but in such cases you want your variance to be low then you can make sure that uh, you, you choose a model uh, you choose a model in this particular range right because you have very low bias um, your variance your variance is very low but your bias is high in this case your bias is very low but your variance is high so depending on trade off and depending on use case which you have you can just choose your uh, model yeah. uh, just just to, just to just to repeat again so as your model complexity increases your variance also increases your bias reduces. So what we want is basically we want some sort of that sweet spot where you're able to get, uh, you're able to sort of balance the trade-offs. You're sort of able to balance the increase in bias as well as a sort of increase in bias. So you're able to get that balance. So this is what basically constitutes your bias and variance trade-off. 